So in module 6.5, we are going to be talking about views and materialized views, what they do, why they're useful, how growth and restructuring impact them, and talk about the difference in a normal view and a materialized view. So we've talked now a bit about joins and projections, and these are really just views of the data, okay? So unlike the relation itself, the view doesn't really contain any data. There's nothing being stored in a view. It's just kind of a window into whatever specific attributes and tuples from the relation, which is stored on the disk of our database uh, server. It's just a view of that that represents some specific uh, business need or business case, right? And this allows our larger set of data to be seen in different ways by different users or different applications. So back on the very second night of class, when we uh, gave our example of Amazon and how Amazon might store their data uh, in the internal schema and in the conceptual schema and in the external schema, right? We had all of these tables with users and products and orders and, uh, and things like that views of the data or what each individual application, like how it might need to interact with the data, okay? So this provides both security and simplicity by showing the user or the application exactly the data they need to see, nothing more, nothing less, right? So imagine if we had uh, in our users table, you know, 200 different attributes describing our users, right? But then all a particular application needs is to verify a user's date of birth, right? So really all that application or all that user would need is the you know, unique identifier of that user, like their username or something like that, and their date of birth. So why should they have to sort through these other 198 attributes describing the user? Well, they, they shouldn't have to, right? It should just be those two attributes they need. It makes it simpler to interact. So that's one way the view helps us. But then also, if we were to expose all 200 attributes, right, which might include things like their phone number or their physical address or their credit card number or something like that, by creating this view that doesn't include that data, we've also increased the security because applications or users that are interacting with the data just simply wouldn't have access to data they don't need access to, right? And it also simplifies our data access by allowing us to, in the view, kind of proactively combine data from multiple tables. So the complexity of our data model is kind of hidden from the users, right? It's abstracted away a little bit. So we get a lot of benefits from, uh, from having views in our database, right? And thinking back to our horse model from a couple of a uh, couple of classes ago, you know, we created all of these or we have all these attributes like the name, color, spots, gender and weight of our horse in this relation. But imagine that uh, we had a, a doctor coming to check on, the, you know, if our horses are pregnant or something like that, right? So we only need to see our female horses, right? So we can create a view of this data using our select operator that returns only female horses, right? And this is a kind of a sneak peek of the SQL code that would take this source relation called horses and return only the tuples where this condition is true, right? So this view has a reduced cardinality from this source relation. It's simpler to interact with because it's only the tuples that we're interested in. And it's more secure because we're not seeing data about tuples that are uh, not relevant to the business question at hand, right? So this is one type of view we could create. Or if we, uh, if we were allocating horses to stables, right? And uh, we have small, medium, and large stables, so we need to know the relative size of our horses. And all we really need to know is the name and the weight, and whoever's doing all this sorting, they don't care if the horse is yellow or brown or black or white, or if it has spots or its gender or anything else. All they need is the, uh, the name and the weight. So we could create a view using our projection that 
returns a new relation with a reduced uh, degree, right? Simplifying things a little bit. So we show the user or the application just exactly what they need to see, nothing more, nothing less. More secure and, uh, and more simple or less complex to interact with, and allows the same data to be seen in different ways by different users. And of course, I've alluded back to our three tier schema architecture before, but what we're talking about here is what lives in the external schema, right? So our views of all of the data that's stored in the conceptual schema make up our external schema, okay? This is different presentations of the data specific to particular applications or what particular users need to see. And one of the things that we talked about when we talked about this three tier schema architecture is that changes to the lower level schemas don't impact the higher level schemas, right? And we gave the example of how we could, excuse me, how we could allocate uh, more database servers to some particular uh, very hot topic, right? And all we have to do is make that change at the internal schema, but it doesn't impact the conceptual schema or the external schema. Now, similarly, when we create these views in the external schema, we can make changes to the conceptual schema or to the internal schema for that matter, but we can make changes to the conceptual schema and the views are going to be just fine, right? So we're gonna look here at growth of our data and restructuring of our data. And uh, one of the things that we do have to be a little bit careful about, especially with restructuring, is that we do maintain this idea of information equi or of the, of the schemas having equivalent information uh, presented at each level. And we'll see what that means in just a moment. So let's, uh, Going back to our horse relation here, which originally had the attributes of name, color, spots, gender, and weight, but now we've grown this relation. We've added another attribute called owner, okay? Well, our view is unaffected, right? We're still just uh, selecting tuples where the gender is female, and we're projecting these same attributes. So even though we added a new attribute to this source relation, our view is unaffected, right? It didn't impact this application that just needs to see female horses, right? So this part here is projecting a subset of attributes, thus reducing the degree. And then this section here is selecting a subset of tuples, thus reducing the cardinality of the, uh, of the resulting relation that's the result of our view. So yeah, similar here, adding attributes doesn't affect our view. If we were to add a new relation to our schema, same exact thing, it still doesn't impact anything, right? So we have our horses, we added owners, this has nothing to do at this point with horses, right? And so our view is unaffected. But now let's think for a moment that, well, we've added this phone number that goes with the horse, but this isn't really the horse's phone number, right? This is the phone number of the owner of the horse. And one thing that we're going to be talking about a lot in the second half of this semester is this idea of data redundancy. And redundancy is a bad thing. And what we've done here is actually introduced some data redundancy since this phone number belongs to the owner instead of belonging to the horse. We see that for M. Grimes, for example, we have this phone number 555-111-2345. It, it shows up multiple times. And in every instance of this phone number, it's describing the same thing. It's the phone number that belongs to M. Grimes, right? Or this is the phone number that belongs to R. Cooper, okay? And this is data redundancy and something that in the second half of the semester, we're going to talk a lot about avoiding, okay? So to avoid this, we could restructure our database to maybe move this phone number 
out to this owner's relation instead of keeping it in the horse's relation where it doesn't really belong, okay? And so now we've done that, that gets rid of the, uh, of the redundancy because now we're just having the full number presented one time for each owner, but our view can remain exactly the same. Now we did have to change the query that is generating this view a little bit, okay? So that's the thing we have to uh, look out for to make this uh, remain information equivalent, okay? But whenever we do this restructuring, we just recreate the view and again, no impact to the users or the applications that are interacting with this data. It's a completely transparent process as far as they are concerned, okay? And we're gonna talk more about how we can create views and materialized views in the second half of class tonight. So these views that we've talked about so far, when we just run a SQL query like this, they are temporary. They're a kind of ephemeral in nature because when we are done working with them, they're not stored to disk generally. They just kind of, they're stored in memory and they just poof, they're, they're away, they go away whenever we are done interacting with them. Materialized views, on the other hand, are snapshots of our data which are constructed from these views that we create. So these uh, kind of freeze our data at a certain point in time and it has the benefit of improving performance. Because if you're talking about many thousands or millions of tuples and complex joins and complex queries and things like that, a, a query may take several minutes or even several hours to run, right? And that may not uh, give you the performance that, you, uh, that you're looking for. So we can, in a way, combat that by creating a materialized view of that data. So it would take the materialized view a long time, several minutes or several hours, however long the query takes, to be created the first time, but then every subsequent time that we query that materialized view, it's going to be very fast. It's going to be as fast as just uh, uh, querying a basic table with no joins or sophisticated stuff going on. Because it's going to take that view and it's going to take the resulting relation and write those values to disk. Okay? The downside to this though, is since it's just uh, creating this relation once and then saving the result, is that over time, these values are going to become stale. Okay? So typically, these materialized views are periodically recreated. Now they may be periodically recreated every few minutes, or every few hours, or every few days, or maybe just once a quarter, right? If we're creating a materialized view, which represents uh, all of the sales that happen in quarter one, well, we're gonna create that once and then uh, be done with it until quarter two comes along, right? Um, and it may take, you know, hours to create that originally, but then once we're done, it's, you know, it's there. So that's materialized views. And uh, again, we're gonna look at that in a little bit more depth, like how we can do that in the second half of class tonight. So views give us simplicity and security and let multiple users and applications see the same data in different ways. Growth and restructuring don't impact our views, which is kind of the beauty of this three uh, schema architecture. And then our normal views are just stored in memory. They go away whenever we're done with them. Uh, whereas materialized views are actually stored to disk and are gonna give us higher performance, but we have to contend with the data becoming stale over time. So the materialized view would need to be periodically recreated.